Hello all, welcome back to the next video in this series. And today we'll talk about HTTP patch method with business and APIs. Quick recap, I'm not going into all the videos, but we understood how to set up APIs in on-prem and SaaS, we understood the authentication, we set up OAuth, uh, we went into the different details of how to get a record, uh, how to filter records, how to expand records, then we went into how to insert records, and then uh, deep insert records, and then batch request. Today, we'll talk about the another method, which is a patch method with the central APIs. And if you haven't watched the previous videos in the series, I'll highly encourage you to go and watch them. Otherwise, you might not understand what I'm covering in this video, because I'll not go into details of everything that we have talked about in past. So let's get started with it. Okay. Let me open this here. Sorry, I've covered it now. Is these two already, which is one is get and one is post, and then another in patch. These are not literally related to what I'm going to explain now, what these means, but for the AL developer or a business central developer or consultant it'll be something that they can use to remember stuff. So when you're calling the get HTTP method or HTTP request, that is equivalent to doing a get in your business central code or AL code. When you do a get, you're trying to get the records from a table or from a uh, from the source table that you would like to fetch records from. And then whatever operation you do on it after you do a get. And I'm pretty sure you guys have written get in business center till now. The next one is post, which is equivalent to doing an insert. What an insert is? An insert is um, I have defined all the properties that I would like to on one particular data uh, that I would like to create, let's say customers. And then at the end you write insert, which is equivalent to recording the data in a business central table. In this case, what I am explaining is customer table. So a post is equivalent to doing an insert in your code. Now, what we are going to cover today is patch. And that is equivalent to doing a dot modify. So now, when you do a modify, what you need to have that the record is already inserted, then and only you will be able to modify it. And then before you modify it, you need to get it. So the way it will work, that the record exists, which means it's already posted. And then you get the record. Once you get the record, then you apply a patch where you are modifying some of the attributes of that entity that you're uh, creating, that you already have in the database. Hope that makes a little bit sense. Let's get into demo to understand how you utilize the HTTP request patch in Business Central. So I'll head back to my Visual Studio code and where I am in, okay, I'm in companies. So let's quickly get, I have only one company, so just copy the ID on it and this, and let's do a send. Okay, that's correct. And then if I have to get, let's say items, so let's do items, let's do send. And I see a list of items. This is the data that is already inserted in the database uh, in this entity which is items if i have to modify some attributes of it that's where it comes so how we do that uh, let's understand it typically what we'll do is we'll choose the method here and instead of post which is for inserting a record we are going to do a patch this time we'll come to put later we are doing a patch not typically when you have to modify something or when you have to insert something you utilize the section of your body and then you use the raw and you choose the json now i don't have to generate or provide the whole payload or the data that i would like i just can do the copy of this paste it here to save time and then i need to specify what i'm going to change to this right 
so let's remove it and let's try to change the uh, display name and blocked let's block this item okay I, yes remember you can only modify fields which are allowed to be modified like i cannot change the inventory of it because inventory goes through a whole process of it uh, where you need to do a negative adjustment or consumption of it so that the inventory can be reduced so i cannot directly go ahead and modify the inventory here because that need to be called from the item general okay so let's assume that we would like to change this now we have selected touch we have selected the entity did we we did not so we need to get the entity how we get it based on the id because id is the unique identifier for the item uh, for the api that we are calling so let's select the entity okay so now i have get the entity here from this company from the item table pick this item and then apply the update here utilizing this section typically it should work so i should do a send and i get an error message what is the error message that request could not validate the client concurrency token required by service please provide a valid token of the client request now when you are doing a patch you need to remember something in the other section called headers now in a header you define what values you need to set and that's how it kind of moves forward uh, the one thing that you need to set is the content type which is content hyphen type and then the content type is your application slash json because we are interacting with, with json and then the other one which is very important to kind of work with it is an another important uh, header parameter which is if match if match and then you need to specify the value as a star what you're telling to the system that if this record is matched then and only then apply the update into it and then the content type is what kind of language you are interacting with so with these two parameter if I apply the same body and I hit send it should go ahead and modify that particular item which i have already get using this id so let's do a send if the result is successful or status okay you will see you will notice the name oh i did not change anything sorry my bad let's do this as api demo and make it as true so if you notice it is still set side panel and it was false let's send this what it is saying now is api demo and the block is true let's go ahead and check that item in our business central if that is let me open that here and that should patch my request uh, or patch my item details in my business central company and that item which i'm dealing with okay so the item is tagged at the number seven triple zero okay far deep into it okay it's now called as api demo and it is set to blocked come on i'm pretty sure it is blocked but let's have a look it's blocked to true if you have to change this change this to false let's send it again and you'll also notice here that it's sent to false and if you go inside your business central refresh the card for 70,000 you will notice it is no longer blocked so utilizing the patch you can do that now because we have time let's try doing this with a um, with what we learned in the last video about doing a multi uh, with a batch if i have to do it on multiple items the same thing what i'll have to do in that case i'll just copy this 
and we'll see an example how you batch batch items so let me copy this and paste it in here and let's do a get of multiple items so let me remove the item from here and let's do a send i should get all the items at this point okay so how we started just do a quick refresher we started with the curly braces inside that we call it as requests and double quotes and then in the request i'll create an array and then inside array i need to define some properties so i'll just copy from the last example that we had and then we'll utilize that just to save time okay i'm doing it here the method is not post it's patch id is one my url i have just copied here so here i'll have to change this to be dollar batch so let me copy that dollar batch and then my url becomes for that particular entity as this and then i need to specify each entity individually that i'm modifying like this so i'll say this is my entity that i would like to modify let's bring this up a little bit uh oh sorry let me zoom this out so that we all can see it here so this becomes my entity that i would like to modify and i'm doing json what's the problem in this oh sorry i forgot to specify that it is a request okay that's my first request so i've defined the method id url and then what left is headers which is optional but in this case if you remember we didn't care about it in the previous one but in this this makes sense because we need to pass the headers here one is content type so let's paste it in here and let's do this as double quotes because it's a name value combination and let's do the value also copy it from here application json and the body and then comma the next one ff match body okay so this is a match and that goes with the value of star okay so that defines my header the last but not least is my body and in the body section what I need to do is identify the request that I'm passing. Okay, what is the request? Let's keep it as it is. Okay. Okay. I'll change it to patch one. And block as true. Or maybe let me pick some other value from here. Okay. What should I change? Okay. I don't know the tax group code. Let's use the block as true. So I'm changing the first item as this. Let me beautify this so that I can copy this. I've defined the body, I've defined the header, URL, and patch. And now what I can do, as you would have understood till now, is I'll just go and copy this as my another request now in this request i'm doing changing the id i also will have to change which request i'm which item i'm modifying so i'll go and pick seventy thousand one, and i'll just copy the id of it paste it here and then i'll change it as patch two let me change it to correct my english and blocked as true. So what I'm doing is on 70,000, 70,001. Both at this point are selected as blocked as false and blocked as false. And both of them are API demo and base. They should change to patch one and patch two records. Everything looks good. I can just empty this section and I'm ready to do a patch. Patch. Hopefully that works.
let's give it a try okay so what should i select here should i select match let's do the patch so if everything goes good my two requests should change uh, two items should change with the names as patch one and patch two and the block should be set to true let's give it a try status okay everything seems okay and now my 70,000 item is patch 1, block 2, and my 70,001 item is patch 2 and block 2. If you go back to your business central, try to open the item number 70,001, it says patch 1, block does enable, and the other one is called patch 2, and block is enabled. So that's how you kind of execute the patch command in your business central. APIs if you have to modify an entity. So let's quickly summarize what we learned today So how do you utilize the patch in business central APIs? The first thing the patch command is used to modify a record in business central like a get request is to get a record a Post request is to insert a record a patch request is used to modify a record in business central you need to make sure that you set the header while you are doing a patch with if match is equals to star equals star and also set the content type as application JSON. In the body, you need to define the field or fields and the values in the JSON format with the name value combination and apply the header and the body and send the patch request. A typical header will look like this where the if match is equals, to, is equals to star and a body will look like this where you are changing the display name of an item. So hope that with this you understand how a patch request work in Business Central and you'll be able to utilize it in your scenarios. So it was a quickie but I think it is important to understand how these different HTTP request methods work with Business Central. If you like the content please hit the like button. If you think it's useful for other people, please share this video on your social media. If you're new to this channel, a humble request to subscribe to this channel that helps us to understand how we are doing, what kind of content we should be preparing going forward. And if you have any questions, I would highly encourage everyone to add those questions in the chat. I'm going to do a QA at the end of the series. I'll try to cover all the questions that I have received till now. And I'll see you sooner than later with the next video in this series. Have a great day and see you next time.